Hey, what's up everybody? It is Julius D. Berry at Majestic Studios. Got another Nautilus quick tip video for you guys today. Um, one of the most important things to us about our keyboards um, is being able to play them with great sounds. But one of the things that affects that more than anything is polyphony. Uh, without polyphony, um, the, the great sounds that are in these great keyboards that we've been uh, privileged to use today um, would be irrelevant. And running out of polyphony is one of the most frustrating things uh, that you can come across when dealing with live performances. It's not as big a deal when, when you're in the studio because you can layer as needed as you record. But when you're in a live performance and you're needing to layer sounds and be able to uh, uh, bring textures in and out um, in order to make the, the big full sound that you want to make in your keyboard, running out of polyphony can be one of the most frustrating things that you can possibly run into. And so today I want to just kind of give you a quick tip about monitoring the polyphony in your Nautilus. Uh, this also um, works um, with the Kronos. It's a feature in that as well. If you look at the Korg's website, and you go to the uh, specifications uh, tab uh, when you're looking into the um, the details on the Nautilus or the Kronos. Um, if you come down here um, into the Tone Generator tab, it tells you about all these uh, wonderful sound engines that are here. Um, there's nine in the keyboard, the SGX2, which is the piano, the EP1, which is the electric piano, HD1, that's the um, high definition synthesizer, the AL1, that's the analog synthesizer, CX3, tone wheel organ, STR1, uh, Pluck Strings, uh, Mod 7, Wave Shaping uh, VPM Synthesizer, the MS20, which is a component modeling technology, uh, another synthesizer, and then the Poly 6 EX, which, which is another component modeling technology, um, modeling an older keyboard that uh, Korg had, um, Korg introduced years ago. Uh, but right below that, it shows you the the voices, the polyphony voices that are allocated to each one of those instruments. Um, so if you look right here, um, it says the SGX2, which is the piano, um, it's, it has 100 voices allocated to that instrument, um, to that, that engine in the keyboard. Um, the EP1 has 104 voices, HD1 140 voices, and I'm just reading this straight off the page. AL1 has 80 voices, the CX3 has 200 voices, the STR1 has 40 voices, the Mod 7 has 52 voices, the MS20 EX has 40 voices, and the Poly 6 has 180 voices. Now just looking at that, you would think, oh my gosh, you know, I will never run out of polyphony. Um, that's a tremendous amount of voices allocated to each engine. And while that is true, there is some little details that you need to know concerning um, how those voices are allocated. And that's kind of what I'm gonna talk to you guys about in this brief video today. Um, if you look at the um, the small print below the polyphony, um, it says in rare cases when a large number of processor intensive effects are active simultaneously, for instance, more than one, more than 14 overbs, polyphony may be slightly reduced. Um, then it says, number two says, and it has a little star beside it, um, says a portion of the multi-core processor in Nautilus is devoted to generating voices and a separate portion is devoted to generating effects. Nautilus dynamically allocates the voice processing power between the engines as necessary. The quoted maximum number of voices apply when 100% of the voice processing power is devoted to a single engine. Okay, basically what that is trying to tell us is that number one, uh, the Nautilus um, has a it's it uses polyphony in the traditional sense, but in a non-traditional sense, that polyphony polyphony is dynamically allocated. Um, each engine, just like in our other keyboards that we've had before, the Tritons, you know, any of that kind of stuff, there was a certain number of voices that the engine could produce for the keyboard. That is the same with the Nautilus, but it's it's a little different now uh, because of the way the processor is set up in the Nautilus. Now with the Nautilus, um, you have processing power that is allocated to just your polyphony and your voices, and then you have processing power that is di that is allocated dynamically to your effects engine. And so how the the Nautilus and the Kronos, how they determine how many voices you can play is it takes what is going on as far as your voices 
and then it takes what is going on as far as your effects are concerned and it like it uh, calculates them together in some kind of algorithm and then from there what you're able to play as far as voices are concerned is 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 spit out like it's computed based on what's going on as far as your your voices the voices that the processor is generating and then the processor that the um the effects that the processor is generating and it it combines that some kind of way and then it spits out hey this is how many voices that you're able to play now with that said it gets a little bit more complicated well what makes what makes it not come before we get to the complicated state is that these numbers that we see on the screen um as far as how many voices are allocated to each engine it is based on if you have if you're in program mode and there is no other engine being utilized if there are no other engines being utilized and you're using a ep1 engine voice then you have straight up 104 voices that you can play um and that's that's dynamically allocated that's also considering um the effects and all of that kind of stuff you know it, it will drop to a certain extent based on that but you probably won't run it you're not going to have so much effects and so much going on um that it's going to drop in a single engine use now that's what number one kind of tells us in rare cases when a large number of processor intensive effects are active simultaneously um for example more than 14 overbs well, why would you have more than 14 overbs um on a single sound it's just it's not going to happen but it's just letting you know that you can have a lot of effects in there before you start to see a uh, deterioration in your polyphony that is allocated for your keyboard it's saying that the polyphony may be slightly reduced Okay, so from there, that is if you're using a single engine in program mode. But what happens if you go to combination mode? Um, I know when Kronos first came out or early in Kronos life, people were saying, you know, uh, we have all of these voices that we can use. You know, we'll never run out of polyphony. But that's not completely true because even in combination mode, all of these voices the polyphony that is allocated for each engine, it is still going to be dynamically allocated depending on what's going on. So if you have an EP playing and an HD1 playing and an AL1 playing in the combination, you're not going to get 104 voices plus 140 voices plus 80 voices. It's going to take the voices that you're using as well as the effects that those sounds are um, that are contributing to the sound. It's going to compute them together. It's going to dynamically allocate them. And then a certain number of voices is going to be spit out as far as being able to play from the keyboard. So, but what I wanted to show you guys um, so, so how I want to show you guys that you can keep an eye on this is if you go to program mode, so we're going to go back to setless mode as if the keyboard just turned on and we're wanting to go to program mode. So we're going to push mode and then we're going to go to program right here in this bottom part of the screen. It says performance meter. So you're going to click performance meter and right here you have a section of the keyboard that is showing you what is happening behind the scenes as it relates to how your voices are being allocated in your keyboard so um the voice the the voice cpu is showing you how much voices are being used and how many voices i guess are being used at any given time um the EXI is a fixed number, fixed amount of processing power that is being used based on the EXI engine or the um, the EXI engine that you're using at that time. The voices is the percentage of voices that are being used in the keyboard when you press a key. Um, the voice stealing is when you start to experience polyphony. When you see that voice stealing, um, that meter starts to light up and move around. You'll start to see a number of voices that are being stolen. Um, from from your sound that means you're losing polyphony sounds are being cut out when you start to see this this being initiated um and the number of sounding voices shows you the number of voices that are being sounded at any given moment from within the keyboard the effect cpu is all based around how many effects are on at a given time not being used as it is, as it relates to i'm pressing the keys and i can hear the effects but if the effects are on then it is using processing power from your keyboard. And then the smooth sound transition just shows you that if your smooth sound transition is um, initiated, meaning you are switching from one sound to the next, then you know that's a great feature, but it's using polyphony from both sounds. It's using effects from both sounds, and so it's using processing power from both sounds. So that also contributes to voice stealing and polyphony loss or loss of voices as you play your keyboard. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just kind of show you guys. I am in a single engine right now. I'm going to go to um, a piano sound. I'm in program mode right now. And I'm going to just show you guys without playing any sounds. See, right now, the, the effects from the the processing that is going on from the effects without me playing anything just going to the sound it's hovering between i guess 11 and 20 something percent it's just kind of bouncing around but if i start to play voices you'll see that the voice cpu is going to light up okay let me turn this up just so you guys can well it's the, it's the sounds that you're hearing are not really important not at this point but if you start to see the voice cpu is that meter is lighting up green and it's also showing you the voice percentage wise that, that you're using overall when it allocates the voices and the effects together the voice percentage that you're using is going up the number of sounding voices this piano uses this specific piano that i'm using now looks like it's using two voices where it says number of sounding voices it's using two voices per key so i'm going to play a three finger chord and it's just say six sounding voices here actually hold on no i take that back it's not just using two voices per key it's going anywhere from four to six looks like it's four and then it drops down to two and that all depends on the elements that are in the background making up that sound um so let's let's show it again so it's four voices for one key if i press a three finger chord it's using 14 voices for that three finger chord and you see it starts to drop off as the uh, sound begins to taper off but you see also that voice percentage is up it goes up higher and higher depending on how many notes you're playing. I'm going to initiate a, uh, gonna double that chord it's with six fingers. Now we're using 27 voices and it went up to 20 something percent. But as you hold the sustain pedal, those old notes are still sustaining and it's using more polyphony. So if you were to do arpeggio, You see those voices start to add up pretty quickly. Well, as those voices start to add up, you think about it in a, we're using only the piano engine right now. So of course it's saying we have a hundred voices theoretically that we can use um, before we start to experience voice stealing. Well, just that small arpeggio I just did um, used 60 of those 100 voices just right there. So if I was to just kind of, let's see if I can uh, play enough voices with sustain to where we can initiate some voice stealing. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to play a regular major chord. Um, well, I'm going to play uh, a C sharp or a D flat major chord um, with a D flat, A flat, and D flat in my left hand, and then F, A flat, C sharp, or D flat, and E flat in my right hand. And I'm just going to continue to play this chord over and over and trying to initiate voice stealing from the engine. Let's watch the uh, performance meter and see what happens. Okay, all of that and I could not, I could not get it to start voice stealing. So let's try again. Let's do the arpeggio that we did. Okay, we start to see that little meter. Once it hit 100 voices, we saw that meter jump up a little bit. Let's try it again. See? It's very hard to with the piano sound to run out of polyphony so that is a leg up that i think the nautilus and the chronos have on a lot of keyboards you're not finding a lot of sounds that are giving you um well i take that back i take that back i'll take that back i'm gonna regress i'm gonna drop that um i do believe that the nautilus has a leg up and the Kronos have legs up on other keyboards as it relates to polyphony, if you know what you're doing with your layering. Um, the way this, the the number of voices they give us per engine and the way it's allocated, um, 
I think it it allows for a bit more. I have heard people say that they run into polyphony issues um, with Kronos, especially early on, and I have heard it a little bit with Nautilus too. But if you know how to layer your sounds and ex kind of how to program, there's some little things that you can do in the background that kind of help with that too. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that in program mode. Now let's go over to combination mode and look at the exact same thing. It's the same thing happens, but you have more voices per sound. So this is the piano and constant voices patch. That's um, the default first sound when you go to combination mode. All right, that's what it, that's what it sounds like. So let's go into the performance menu. Let's see what's going on with each voice. Let's see. First of all, let's look at something in this sound. We have one, two, three, four, five. Well, probably looks like right now only one, two sounds are being initiated. So it's probably a part of the ARP or the drum track. Let's see. So right now during this arc, let's look at what our voices are doing. So we're using about 43 max percent of the effect CPU. We're using 80% of the allocated, of the 100% of voices that were allowed. 100%, not 100 voices. See, and we start to see some voice stealing. If we look here under the voice stealing tab, more notes we play we start to see more and more of the voices being stolen okay so without that arp and that drum in there though so let's push one note so we got seven voices from one note all right so we play at that same three finger chord double up we're at about, we hit 89 voices. Let's let all of it disappear out completely to zero. Now we're gonna play that three finger chord double. We got up to 45 notes, 45 voices right there. So if we play with the sustain pedal and do that and reinitialize it, we can jump up. It jumped up to 84 voices just that quick. So you have to be really careful as you start to layer sounds and don't just layer three, four, five, six, seven, eight sounds and then just say, oh, I'm going to be good. Then you go into a performance and your voices are dropping. As you're playing your sounds and as you're making your layers, you need to come into this menu and look and see how the performance meter is responding to uh, the sounds that you're adding. And as long as you keep these numbers in check, then you don't have to worry about voice stealing and polyphony issues. But the way the Kronos and the Nautilus do their voice stealing is really smooth. You can very, it's very rare that you even hear it happening unless you're just you know, being like, you're just, you know, wilding with your, with your layers and with your sustain pedal and playing a lot of notes at a time. You don't just hear those dropouts very, very audibly. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's, it's considerably less notable, noticeable here with these, this keyboard, the Nautilus list the Kronos as it is with other brands of keyboards when they have voice dropouts and voice stealings. So I'm going to show you something else, this little trick just that um, you can kind of check on um, as you're doing your programming. Okay, so here's a quick tip um, digging into the engine a little bit that'll give you guys uh, some help as far as programming and running into polyphony issues. If you go into your program and you push the page button, go into, first of all, you're in program mode. If you push the page button, and then go to right here at basic XY controllers. In this section here is where you can, you're determining the type of voice you have. It's called voice assign mode. Polyphonic means the voice will play multiple notes. Monophonic means the voice will play a single note. But if you go over here onto the right, it says the maximum number of notes. You can hear, you can tell the program, this is the most polyphony that I want you to use at a given moment with this exact program. So you push max number of notes. It's, it can be dynamic, which is DYN. Like I told you, that's dynamically allocated based on the engine that you're using, based on the effects that you're using. 
um, at any given moment, that number is computed and calculated and spit out based on what's going on. You can put it on DYN, which means that dam dynamic, or you can set it to where you can only play a couple of voices at a time. So I just put it on one, so let's see what happens. So you see now my piano, I'm gonna play a chord. I can't even, I can't even play a chord because I've told the Nautilus, hey, only use three notes, only use one note. Now, if I go up to three, let's go to two. It's not even playing it there. Let's go to three. Okay, let's try something because maybe it's because we have two of these. Um, pianos in the let's take this up this second one off let's cut it off okay now here we go dynamically allocated it's done we're going to go to one voice it doesn't work let's go two voices okay so remember i was telling you guys earlier that um this piano sound it was sometimes initiating six voices, four voices, six voices with just pressing one key. So of course, if now we're telling it to only play four notes, it can't even play the full version of the sound that it would otherwise be playing because we were limiting the amount of notes it's playing. So like at four notes, it's only playing part of the sound. Let's listen to it at four notes and let's listen to it when we have it at dynamic. Okay, it's the same. One voice, cutting off, two voices cutting off, three voices cutting off, four voices, we're able to get four voices out of the sound, five voices, six. So let's see if we can play a full chord now that it's on six voices. Nope, can't even play a full three finger chord. So I know this seems weird, but this was this really gives you a lot of control over how many voices specific sounds in your layers are using. So now I wouldn't be limiting with my piano, but I might take a synthesizer sound and tell it to only use X number of voices. Um, then you don't then it takes away from polyphony down the road once it makes into makes it into combi mode. I wanted to show you guys that so you can go into program mode and you can tell each one of your programs that this is the maximum number of voices I want to use. So you can go in there, you can play with it until it fits your playing style or if it's a sound that you really like, but you know you can limit your voices that can help you gain polyphony to use in another engine when your sound makes it into combi mode. So I think that's a really cool tip and you know this is something um, I'm not sure if it's exclusive to Korg instruments, but I've not really seen anything else like it on um, any of the other flagship or step down boards um, that the other companies offer. Um, it may be there. If somebody knows about it, please leave that down in the comments and I'll be sure to take a look at it. Um, but Korg has had this um, in their system for, for a little while, seems like. Um, so we can go in and we can manually adjust how we want the maximum number of voices to be played from a specific program. And then when we go into combi mode, let's go to combination mode, we can go to that same menu. We'll go to combi, and then we go to page, and we go to timber parameter. Right here where it says maximum number of notes, that's this last row. You can go into each one of the sounds within your combi and you say this PRG means I want you to take whatever I have it set from in the program. However it's set in the program, like when we were in that program, when we had everything set up, whatever you have set in this screen in the program mode, that will carry over into the combination in this timber, timber parameter screen for the PRG, but you can, I mean, when you have it set to PRG, meaning program. But if you push the program, now you can go in, you can say, I want it to allocate it dynamically, which is gonna probably make you run out of voices. Um, could be quicker, could be less, depending on what else is going on within your sound. Or you can tell the program, hey, I only want you to play this many voices from the specific um, element at a given moment. So that is a really cool tip. 
And that alone, if you guys you know are willing to dig into your keyboards, will help you a lot as far as your polyphony is concerned. Um, if you're running into polyphony, you know number one, you don't want to just bombard just because an instrument has you know a million voices of polyphony doesn't mean you want to go in and layer a million voices a million sounds and you know use your faders or your knobs or whatever to control the voices um because it can still start to sound like garbage um you can you can split your keyboard into sections and, and and layer within the sections and that you know you don't need a full 88 key or a full 61 key or a full 76 key or 73 key worth of eight sounds layered you know different sections of the songs require different things and you can set that stuff up in sections of your keyboard so think about that with your polyphony as well um you know and that doesn't just go for for core keyboards that's other keyboards as well when you're when you're building your sounds and building your sets be creative don't just like put every sound on the keyboard and all i mean you don't you don't need bells you know when you're playing in church you don't need bell sounds way in the middle of the keyboard you know that's something that you could just put at the top so you can get that top end sparkle from your bells then just section that bell section off at the top end of the keyboard and that way it's not eating polyphony down here where you're in the middle or the bottom of your keyboard you know there's there's they've given us the polyphony and the tools to use but it's up to us to be creative and go in and program dig in your keyboards don't just take stuff for face value dig in and see what's there there's a lot um that you can program to make this stuff customizable to you how you play and how you want to play um there's no right or wrong way to do it just go in there and test it and see what happens um and you may hear your guy saying like oh man you know when i put four sounds on my nautilus it, it starts to 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 drop notes and you're like oh i don't have that problem until it gets to eight or nine voices and it's because you've dug into your keyboard and gone in and set it up specifically for how you want it and what fits you the best so um i hope this helps you guys with your polyphony um now you know how to go in and monitor your polyphony you know some different ways that you can go in and allocate different voices um to to be a maximum or a minimum number of voices um and it should help you guys be able to get more out of your keyboard with your combinations and your layers so hope this helps and um like i said if this stuff is helping you guys please like and subscribe share these videos um the channel is moving right along we can only grow if you guys watch the videos and share the content so uh please support the channel and uh we appreciate you guys and, and we're enjoying making this content I'll catch you guys on the next video take care